The Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. EliteForm.com, IgnitionAPG.com, PlayUSA at PLAEUSA.com, and Sorenex Exercise Equipment at Sorenex.com. And now, the Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast. Welcome to Iron Game Chalk Talk with your host, Ron McKeever. Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! Everything you got! On this podcast, hear Coach McKeever's straight talk about training, featuring the top strength and conditioning professionals from around the world. And now, here's your host, Ron McKeever. Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Rob McKeefrey, and this is episode number 107. Iron Game Chalk Talk is a weekly podcast where I bring you experts in the field of talk shop. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to us on iTunes or YouTube or join the mailing list at robmckeefrey.com to stay up to date with the latest guests and anything else that I have going on. This week, super excited to have a good friend, Matt Jennings, with us. Matt is the head strength coach at Xavier University. Uh, I, I, perennial top 25 program for basketball and he's a guy that we all go all the way back to the internship days you know we were both interns with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh some 17 18 years ago whatever it's been now and just a, a guy that I, that stayed in my life uh throughout the entire career process a guy that I go to for advice and uh just an all-around good guy and I know you're gonna get a ton out of this episode before we do, I want to make sure we recognize all of our sponsors. We have EliteForm.com, Sorenex.com, PlayUSA.com, and, and of course, Ignition APG. And what's great um, you know, about Matt and, and Ignition is you know, they've partnered up, and it's, it's one of those situations where um, a lot of times you, you, you worry about outside influences coming in and, and those types of things. But you know, Ignition is just such a great company. They do it the right way, mind, body, and spirit. They're not, you know, they're not threatening it at all. Just a, a great resource for strength coaches. So, yeah, they got tons of products and, and things that would be of interest to strength coaches. They have their um, speed certification. They have some bands. They have, um, you know, a, a mixed martial arts DVD out right now. Um, they have, you know, a, a supplement line and the whole deal. And, and so I'd encourage you to check out Ignition APG. Uh, if anything, just go to their, their Facebook page and uh, I like the Facebook page. Stay up to date with some of the things that they got going on. Just, you know, fantastic stuff in the community. Uh, you know, they just recently had Rex Burkhead out, who we had with Cincinnati, you know, uh, working with Special Olympics kids out at, at one of the Cincinnati tennis facilities there. And just, you know, like I said, couldn't be prouder to be associated with such a great company. And, uh, and just doing it, you know, not just within the four walls of the weight room. So I'd encourage you to reach out to them, follow them, and uh, and just check out what they have going on. Super excited to get to this episode. I know you're going to get a ton out of it. Sit back and enjoy. Take lots of notes, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. Excited to have a good friend of mine. He looks really old because we are both getting extremely old in this profession now. But this is Matt Jennings, head strength coach at Xavier this is a guy that I did our my internship with uh, together. We were both interns at Tampa Bay Buccaneers way back when, and um, just a phenomenal person, phenomenal guy, phenomenal friend, and I'm um, excited to have him on the show, man. appreciate you coming on. Hey, thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. You've always been a good friend of mine, and like you said before, we've known each other for a number of years, and we've been doing this job for a number of years, and, <laughs> both uh are showing our age but you know what it keeps us young too because these young folks keep us young so it's it's a pleasure to be here i really appreciate you asking me it's an honor uh you're always a great friend always great catching up with you and i really appreciate you thanks man well you know we're just talking off camera about all the ailments we got you know knees and shoulders and the whole deal but hey we talked a little bit about the bucks you know go go into you know xavier there now kind of you know take us through your journey you know go all the way back to North Carolina playing days, and then you know how you've kind of got to where you're at currently. You know, I think I said this in the in the master ceremony at the CSCCA. I think the uh, the start of my journey started in the basement with my dad. You know, my dad was a football coach, and 
and he started uh, training when I was about 12 years old. I've got twins that are 13 now, and a young guy that's almost 11, and we've been dabbling a little bit now, so it kind of brings <laughs> back some fond memories. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the the iron game and the love of, of, of lifting started with, uh, with my dad. And I carried on through high school, uh, carried on to college. I played football at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Um, and like I said, I've had a, you know, a lot of mentors that have, that have led the way. You know, from a football standpoint, Rich Tootin, uh, Greg Supporter were both in the weight room when I started as a freshman. Jeff Madden, Jim Smith, you know, Mad Dog Bulldog, then took over my sophomore year. Uh, a man named Ben Cook uh, was really, I think, probably my best mentor in the profession to get me started. Ben was an assistant with North Carolina football, then took over North Carolina basketball. When I stopped playing and tried to figure out what I want to do as a career and deciding whether or not, just like what you did, do I want to be a football coach, do I want to be a strength coach, you know, I turned towards Ben and the basketball program, and he allowed me to come down and, and shadow him and ask questions and talk shop. And, and Ben's been a really good friend, and I've talked, kept touch with him over the years as well uh, through his you know, work with my, uh, Alan Tyson, I believe, in Charlotte Rehab Center, and he's working with NASCAR crews and uh, doing some pit training and some strength coaching with NASCAR crews. And he's really been a good friend. But from North Carolina, you know, you know, you know the journey always is never a straight line. And that's one thing you know, we always talk about these young guys is that it's got its ups and downs, peaks and valleys, and, and Absolutely. I had an early you know valley in the, in the first part of my career. I had a a promised graduate assistantship at Clemson University with Gary Wade. Uh, I had a couple interviews on site. You know, you know how it is when you're young. You spend your own money, you drive your own car, you stay in your own places, and yep. you have these you know hopes and dreams and aspirations to be a GA at Clemson. And uh, I always get jealous when I see Coach Batson and, and Coach <laughs> Greenwood, some of these guys that uh, that have worked there. Coach Sis, Coach Abernathy goes, you know. That was my first dream was to go there and do that, and that dream got got squished pretty quickly. With <laughs> it was just how you know the business works. You know this. Uh, you know some GA stick around longer than expected. Some people get jobs, some people don't. I was in a holding pattern for a little while, so that GA never really you know fulfilled itself. Never came through, and I ended up uh, living in Seneca, South Carolina, Clemson, South Carolina, for a year, just making ends meet. You know, I was working on a farm as a farmhand. I was uh, just doing whatever it took to, to kind of make ends meet. At the same time, you know, was still sending out. At that time, you know, it was handwritten letters, uh, email, and, yep. and phone calls. You know, really weren't uh, really weren't a big deal. But you make a few phone calls, write a lot of handwritten letters, and and I, I did the same thing at University of Tennessee and reached out to those folks and John Stuckey, Tommy Moffat, Tony Allison, Johnny Long. Those guys were there. Tommy Moffat uh, brought me in on an interview. Uh, let me uh, take a look around, talk shop. Ended up same thing. You know, at work. You know, if you can get in grad school, we'll put you to work and. Ended up, you know, in that, that time frame and that standard is you always started as a volunteer and then you worked your way into a paid internship position then a graduate assistantship yeah. position and, you know, stayed there from uh, the August of 97 and through uh, March of 99 and, you know, you worked the, the gamut there. Everybody trained football, which was great, really good time to be there with SEC championships and national championship. Uh, took care of uh, as assistant, you know, GA assistant with basketball with Coach Allison, uh, you know, GA assistants. Um, you know, with baseball, with uh, Johnny Long, et cetera, um, really just, you know, took care of teams, you know, swimming and diving, cross country, track, really learned, you know, the ropes of, of taking care of programs and different coaches and different teams, different athletic trainers. And that's where I, you know, went from there. Um, met you for the first time, March 99, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, for some reason, the job market was really dry coming out of Tennessee in that, that 99 year. Uh, really wasn't a lot going on. And uh, same thing, I tried to prepare it ahead of time and, I sent numerous letters uh, to every professional organization I could think of, basketball, baseball, football, hockey, other colleges. I also want to go do another graduate assistantship somewhere and do whatever it took. And uh, it's just kind of funny how things work out. You know, I wasn't expecting anything. It was late in the game. Actually, Coach Zanovich called me. I think I actually remember I showed up a week later uh, than you guys did because it happened That's so right. late um, that he called me up. He met Tommy Moffitt. At a clinic in Miami, had asked Tommy about myself. Tommy gave me a good recommendation. He felt like that was good enough. Gave me a call. We had the uh, the interview over the phone. You know, what is strength? I don't know if you remember that question. You oh know, yeah. But, uh, you know, it was it was really straightforward. You know, very scientific, very educational. And uh, Coach Sonovich uh, brought me on, and obviously you know how it works with uh, uh, Aaron Comerick, Les Ebert, uh, Bill Snowden. You know, all the guys that we work with there. Right. Uh, it's been uh, you know March '99. You know, you know how it goes. It goes. You know, uh, you know, volunteer work, you're, you're still working, making ends meet. You know, I'm working in a warehouse loading boxes. I'm working at downtown YMCA, you know, trying to do some training. Uh, and you're working your way through the program. Yep. And, uh, you end up, you know, staying on for the season. 
staying on the next year as a, so to speak, the head intern to take care of the new intern class. At that time, that's when you and I took a trip up to uh, the Tennessee Clinic. Yeah. And on a whim, this is one thing you always try to recommend these young folks is really just put yourself out there and really, you know, take a chance and, 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 and go with your gut and do what it tells you to do. And I remember you and I talked about it, like, hey, do we want to go? Do we not want to go? We said, yeah, let's shoot up there and we'll do it. Happened to meet Ed Ellis, Scott Sinclair at Wake Forest. They were looking for an assistant interview for that job and then got it. And I really firmly believe that if I hadn't been there with you and we hadn't talked shop and met those guys, that opportunity wouldn't have come about because once again, at that time, you're talking, you know, early 2000, you know, message boards and, and things that are, are really prominent today weren't there. You That's had to right. word of mouth. You had, to, you had to figure it out. Started at Wake Forest in 2000 in the summer, worked four years there uh, through the next April of 2004. Um, took care of football with Ed Ellis, Scott Sinclair. Uh, took care of you know baseball, men's soccer, women's soccer. I've done men's golf, women's golf, uh, men's tennis, women's tennis. You know, all the, the Olympic sport exposure you could have. Uh, when football, um, we had a new strength coach come in, Ethan Reeve, at L. Scott Sinclair, went to Georgia Tech. Uh, I stayed behind, you know, personal reasons. Uh, wife was pregnant with twins, bought a new house. Right. Uh, from North Carolina, you know, from the Winston-Salem area. That's where my family's from, so it's a great place to be. Uh, Coach Reeve came in, took over uh, the head program. Mike Talati came in with him. At that time, Coach Reeve didn't want to help with football as well. And, uh, I mean, you know, we'd assist, Mike and I would assist some and, uh, you know, help with, you know, some of the uh, the programming, scout day, et cetera. Uh, but really, Coach Reeve wanted to handle things on his own, which at that time was, I felt like, a pretty unique situation. Nowadays, it seems to be pretty commonplace that right. a lot of people are bringing in, you know, offense in one group, defense in one group, running huge groups, taking care of teams. Uh, so that really allowed me the chance uh, to take care of basketball, and that's where I've been ever since, is that uh, when Coach Reed took over football, I knew that basketball was an opportunity at Wake Forest that was available, and I asked if I could be that guy, and that's where you know I started with men's basketball with, with uh, Coach Odom was leaving, Coach Prosser was coming in, uh, and that's where I actually met my boss now, Chris Mack. Coach Mack and Pat Kelsey were there. That's how I ended up here at Xavier, but... Uh, Basketball was where it was at, so I took care of men's women's basketball, still had men's soccer, had baseball, had some success there with you know, some various ACC championships, et cetera. Uh, but once again, you know, jobs uh, come and go a little bit. Even though things are going really well, things are good, uh, you know, things just can sometimes turn, and you always look for the next opportunity. And I did that with Coach Odom at South Carolina. So uh, in April of 2004, I left to go to University of South Carolina with Coach Odom. Stayed there through uh, the summer of 2007. Uh, took care of men's basketball, volleyball there. Uh, the next position I had was at High Point University, and this is just one of those things out of the blue. You don't expect to change. You don't. You're not looking for it. And sometimes when it rains, it pours. It really does. And you're you're on the phone and you're talking to the head basketball coach at High Point, Bart Lundy. He's looking for somebody to run a program and start a program from scratch. And he never had a strength coach, never had a weight room, didn't know what to do. He's asking questions. And I was really pushing one of our GAs, John Vaden. I was pushing John to go take care of that and. And uh, we were talking, we were talking, and, and after about a week on the phone with Coach Lundy, he basically just asked, like, hey, Coach, uh, what's it going to take for you to come up here and do this? And uh, we negotiated a little bit, got a little better salary, some moving expenses, and, and took care of it. And that was a really good experience for me because I was looking forward to it. One, you know, selfishly get back home. Right. North Carolina is, uh, is my home, and, and it's great to be close to family, especially with the, my children and my wife, and her parents are close by, and, the, you know, the grandkids. And, you know, uh, my parents and her parents can take care of the grandkids and look after them, and it's, it's nice. But, um, you know, professionally it was great. Head strength coach for the first time. Uh, and I did a lot in those two years I was there, you know, to start a program. And it's a lot of work when you're there by yourself. Absolutely. Trying to, you know, start a weight room, start a program, take care of teams, work with coaches. You know, once again, administrators, athletics, trainers, everybody you can think of. And, you know, in that two years' time of work, you know, it's, it's, it's probably that's where I got all this gray hair from because it's, <laughs> it's a lot of stress. It's, uh, you know, it's about four years' work of work, about two years. And, and we really try. I think we set the, the the tone for that program, and it's really done well. I mean, when uh, you know, Tim Teefy took over for me, uh, came from George Mason, who's now, you know, Tim did go to Villanova, I believe. Now he's uh, he's at Temple right now, but Tim did a great job taking over. Uh, once again, sometimes you have to leave a program to make it better. Also, sure. You know, that's sometimes uh, the advice and experience you get in this profession is that you know, as much as you want to stay, uh, sometimes you know you don't want to stay for the kids. And don't get me wrong when I say this, because it's one thing my dad always told me. As a coach, he said, you know, Matt, the kids will come and go. Right. You know, every year's going to have a new freshman class, new senior class. It's the same, same, same. And sometimes you may need to leave uh, to make yourself better and make the program better. And 
that's what happened at High Point. I had to leave to make the program better. You know, it was uh, and when I left and an assistant got hired, there was more money in the budget, more money for equipment. You know, things got better. And that's, uh, you know, an opportunity that I left. You know, my choosing was to come to Xavier. Right. Uh, I got a call. Uh, I got a call on Father's Day weekend. Uh, this position was open. I know for sure I wasn't their first choice because I know I'm not the best strength coach in the world, but I know I'm certainly not the worst either. And, <laughs> you know, it's uh, an opportunity that came available that I couldn't say no to. Uh, right. You know, you know, I say professionally, it's a head strength coach position again. It's working with big-time college basketball. Uh, I get to run a staff. I have two staff members, um, like the intern program, et cetera. You know, bigger budget, bigger facility. You know, it's, it's everything you want to progress your career with. And uh, like I said, I've been here since uh, the summer of 2009. I'm going on year six. Uh, like I say, things couldn't be better here at Xavier. We're doing really well. Yeah. Uh, in a, in a five-minute nutshell, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's the career path. So it's it's a lot of moves. And here's the thing about it. You know, it's and you and I both know this with family, it's tough. Um, you know, for us professionally, it can be easy because we can be put into a situation uh, where we just, you know, hit the ground running. You know, we know what we want to do program-wise. We can coach kids, work with athletes, you know, trainers, coaches, et cetera. For the family, it can be tough. You know, right. it's, uh, it's hard for the wives to move, and you, you put a lot of onus on them. And they're really, the, you know, the quiet professionals that, that take care of the, the moving and take care of the kids and the schooling. And, and you know, God bless uh, you know, our wives for doing what they do because we couldn't do what we do without them. Absolutely. Um, and like I said, it's, uh, it's, it's a blessing to have those those type of people in your life to support you as well. So. Xavier's a good place. A lot of good people here. Uh, Cincinnati's a great place to live. Great area for strength coaches. Uh, you know yourself, you've been here for a little bit. There's you know, From the high school level to the college level, professional level, to the, the training centers that are here, a lot of good places to, to, to talk shop with people, and it's a good place to be. Well, that's, you don't you know you don't get to be at a master strength coach without having a journey like that for sure. And in this business, unfortunately, it's all over the place, and, and you've picked up things yeah, along the way, and um, great opportunities, and it's landed you at a place where it's it's fairly you know it's not you know it's not outside the norm obviously, but it's unique in that it does it's a school that doesn't have football, and, and I don't think High Point didn't have football either, did it? High Point didn't either. You're right. I mean, it's uh, the last time I really was exposed to football as a coach was that year, uh, 2000, 2001 at Wake Forest. Um, yeah. So South Carolina had football. You know, I had my own weight room in the basketball, the practice facility, the old arena that basketball, volleyball trained out of. And, you know, I was around those guys. I saw those other Olympic sport coaches and other football strength coaches, you know, Pat Moore, Billy Anderson, Mike Golden, you know, all those folks, Alyssa Goldman. Um, you know, we saw those folks. And right. hung out and were, were, were coaches together. But Last time I was you know, really associated in the trenches with football was in 2000, 2001. So, I forgot you know, it. Xavier is a place that does not have football. You're correct. You know, and so with that, I mean, here's a, here's a guy that played college football at one of the premier programs, went worked college football at, and won a national championship, That's NFL. Great. You know, you go from, um, you know, having a passion for football to obviously a sport that maybe, you know, you played a little bit as a kid, but maybe wasn't something that, you, you know, you jumped into. Talk a little bit about how, you know, you've probably, I would imagine, you know, you've probably had to rework your passion a little bit, um, but to get to a place and, and fight for resources and, and um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a unique situation, you know. So talk a little bit about the challenges that you face being at a school that doesn't have football and then obviously some of the benefits as well. Sure. Um, I think you, you really hit it on the head. It's, it's a different world for me because I still have that itch. You know, I still get that nostalgia. You know, in August when you smell the grass and it's fresh cut and, you know, the summer right now, it's time to train. You know, just right. like basketball, I, I really – I don't want to take a football approach to training basketball, but I still have a little bit of that mentality where you know that the summer is your time to really get better. It's a time to be selfish, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of teamwork together in the summer. We truly really tell our guys that, you know, the ball starts bouncing in, you know, September, October with our team. That's where our teamwork really gets developed. The summer's a time where our guys can be somewhat selfish and they can really take care of themselves. And, you know, that summer training is really where it's at. And it's just like the same thing with football. You really, you know, you're in the trenches with the guys in the summer. And, you know, very similar concept, <coughs> ground process like everything else. You know how that is. But, uh, you know, I, I do miss, you know, that aspect. I know that I'm so far removed from it. Uh, I know that I've had a lot of good folks like yourself that have tried to get me back into it. And, sure. you know, the timing is just not right. And, like I said, I always appreciate guys like yourself and, you know, Noel Durfee and a few other good friends of mine that have asked and come a-calling, but like I say time and circumstances and situations sometimes don't work, and it's uh, it's good to be where I am right now. But to ask you a question also is, uh, you know, it's 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 hard. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to, to separate yourself sometimes 
but I think the easiest thing to do is it's more competitive. You know, it's, for me, it's competitive because we're all still competitive. That's why right. we do what we do, I believe. Right. You know, instead of you playing 12, 13, 14 games a year, you have an off week or you, you have a, a bad week and you got to sit out a week. We're playing two games, three games a week, and the competitiveness just really gets you going during the season. And that's what I enjoy about basketball is that it's a it's a long process. We had a long year last year with a foreign tour. You know, we played well, so we played the Sweet 16, so you can't complain about that. But it made for a long season. But you really get excited about that competition. And that's right. what I enjoy about basketball is that you're competing at a high level multiple times a week, and it just it never stops. And, and, and it really is an exciting thing. Um, you know, we really try to recruit that also. You know, we recruit uh, with our kids, and we tell them, you know, we're not a football school. You know, we're not going to see – you know, an enormous 20,000 square foot weight room that's, that's somewhat dedicated to football. But it's in the flip side, right though, there. coach, is that right really we really work ourselves towards basketball. Right there. Right and there. it's a trickle down effect because if basketball is really good at Xavier, then all the other sport teams are, are really good, too. Right. Uh, it's like, you know, your school, football is going to be really good, then all those schools will benefit. So we've, as basketball, you know, coaches or basketball players, we've got to carry that, you know, bell cow to the university in the, in the front door of the university, so to speak. There's a lot of stress and pressure put on that. But, uh, you know, very similar, but very different. And I don't think we're doing anything really differently than, uh, than other teams that may have football or may not. It's just that we have our space. It's a 2,500 square foot weight room. We take care of all our sport teams there. You know, basketball does have priority uh, with their training time, with, you know, the room being open or closed with them. Obviously, you know, the NCAA rules with feeding, we're allowed to feed our guys. We take care of those guys and do that. You know, we really go above and beyond and spend the extra dollar and go the extra mile to take care of our guys, whether it be, you know, our yoga session tomorrow, whether we do our you know contractual work with, with Ignition Athlete Performance Group yesterday, if we take them over to uh, Beyond Exercise to the Ultra G treadmill or the cryo chamber, you know we're gonna we're gonna do things to really you know set ourselves apart and really try to get our guys ready because all we're asking our guys to do is just compete and they're asking right. our guys to give effort and work hard and we're gonna take care of them you know on the backside just like a football program would. Absolutely. Um, so it's uh. Like I said, it's, it's different. It's similar but different. I know that may you know, be kind of ambiguous, but you know, I do miss uh, the sport. I enjoy playing it. I love playing it. I thought I was pretty good at it. And uh, and then you're, like, you're in the trenches with those guys and you're training those guys, then all of a sudden you're doing it with basketball. Right. But I really sort of take the same mentality, same approach to it. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a competitive sport. You know, it's, basketball is a, a contact sport. It's not a collision sport like football, but it's right. a contact sport. Absolutely. You're going to train head to toe just like a football player would front to back head to toe and we're going to take care of the bodies and get them ready for competition and keep them healthy you know obviously you know health safety wellness of the student athletes where it's at we got to get our guys you know, ready to compete on the court and like you said i'm not a basketball player um I'm a, I'm a coach and i want to be the best coach i can be and our basketball coaches are basketball coaches those yep. are the guys that teach those guys the skill of basketball i'm trying to teach them the skill of lifting weights sure and try to keep them healthy and safe and keep them out of the training room keep them on the practice court game court so they can get those reps and and that's the ultimate goal of what we're all trying to do. Is, you know, like, like Coach Sonovich taught us, you know, it's orthopedically safe, physiologically sound. Yep. Those are the two biggest things your program is on. Is it orthopedically safe? Is it physiologically sound? And that's you got to answer those questions, ask those questions every time you write a program, and every time you take a kid through a workout. And if we're doing that, we're doing the right thing. You mentioned, you know, the summer being a really great time to, to dial in on your athletes. You know, um, Kind of talk big picture about the you know yeah. the summer program with you know with working an elite level basketball program top you know top sixteen sweet sixteen, you know what how many days a week are you train in kind of how's that broken up you know into and, right. and maybe some u- unique things about your program that uh, or maybe different than what you've seen around the country. Yeah, yeah like I said, I think you know quiet is kept. I think you know Xavier stays on the radar, and we like it that way with. We've been to three Sweet Sixteens in the last six years, and there's only seven, eight, nine programs in the country that can say that. We're talking, you know, the Duke, the Kansas, the Carolina, right. the Louisville. We're talking some big time programs, and we're right up there with them. We're just, uh, we're just a little bit away from having that really special recruit, that really special year, really breaking through. And that's what we train for. That's what we do. You know, our goal is always to make the NCAA tournament, and that's fine. But can we make it to that second weekend, third weekend? You know, Elite Eight, Final Four, and that's what we're, we're shooting for. Uh, we've got a really special team right now. Our guys are really working hard this summer. Uh, we're in the second week of our intercession May semester, which is technically the first week of summer school. Uh, so we have a 13-week summer uh, with one week off in between. So our first session will go seven weeks, and then we get a, a week off, and then we our last session is six weeks. But it's a year-round process, just like anything else. We go from a four-season approach. Our summer will roll right into our preseason. 
which will go to our end season, which will go to our postseason, then right back into the next summer. But our summer approach is uh, we're going to take care of our guys. We're going to feed them breakfast. We're going to feed them lunch. We're going to train them. Uh, we're going to train three days a week in the summer. Uh, we do a three-day Monday, Wednesday, Friday split, total body each day. Uh, we're going to, like I said, feed them breakfast and lunch those days. On our Tuesday, Thursdays, uh, we've taken an approach to try to go outside and use some contractual work and use some budget money uh, to do some alternative things, uh, whether that be you know, with Cliff Marshall, Ben Kramer, and Ignition, uh, on Tuesday, Thursdays, uh, whether it be with our yoga instructor, Meredith Hogan, uh, you know, some alternative things that may be outside the box thinking that, you know, I feel like it's athletic development, but yet it's still, uh, you know, fun and fresh and, and gets our guys excited about training. And that could be, you know, some of the alternative training, like boxing training. Um, you know, and you, I know you've done some, some combat type things before and you're not teaching guys to be a boxer to, you know, to, to beat each other, but, you know, I, I can't tell you how much I enjoy watching our guys improve things, you know, foot speed, hand-eye coordination, just concentration levels from the boxing. We've got some guys, just like you would, that have, you know, some ADD issues or ADHD issues. And to have them, you know, focus for three minutes in a round and work these combos and these hand, you know, hand-eye coordination type combos, well, no, it was great to see because you know they can lock in and it gets their attention. Right. I thought that was great for our guys. We did that last year. We're going to continue to do that this year as well. Um, we don't do you know, a lot of impactful kind of conditioning in the summer. That's something that I think is unique from our program is we're going to lift and we're going to train hard. We're going to lift three days a week and we're going to train hard three days a week. Our, our basketball skill on the court, which our coaches are now allowed to take care of our guys a couple hours a week for NCAA rules. Our guys play pickup and organize pickup with themselves. Uh, we have some you know different you know, type of competitions during the summer for guys getting up shots in the gym on the, uh, the automatic rebounders, the guns. Um, so we do some things like that. Our guys are expected to get basketball shaped by playing basketball. Right. If there's a need for a couple of guys that need to do things for body comp, body weight, body fat, et cetera, we'll take care of that and do some extra conditioning. And that's where I really try to lean more towards like an interval weight training philosophy, kind of like the Pat O'Shea interval weight training type philosophy. I'll mix in you know, some cardiovascular work with our strength training. Um, I've been really big on some of our guys. We have some Concept 2 rowers. We have some Concept 2 ski ergs. You know, we've got some step mills, some bikes, some woodway treadmills. We'll try to mix that up a little bit. Uh, for a program also that has a track team, we don't have a track, so if we need to go <laughs> use the track, there's uh, you know, we got some challenges now, Coach. We do. Um, there's a couple high schools within you know, a mile of here, Withrow and Walnut Hills. We'll go use their track, their turf area. Right. Um, and I'm still, if we take some guys on the track or turf, you know, it's – it's more interval type things. It's 200 meter intervals. It's, you know, one tens on the turf. And that's that kind of that football mentality I still have is that, you know, sprinting is where it's at. I want to see our guys move, you know, the long, slow distance, methodical running, in my opinion, is not where it's at. We don't need to do that. So we're going to still take care of that, you know, anaerobic type system, which I know the energy systems for basketball are a little bit different, but I like to see our guys move. And I like to see our guys sprint and I like to see things tough on our guys and make it hard. Mm -hmm. them to understand this is what hard work looks like and feels like. And we'll take the appropriate work rest ratios with them and build into it during the summer. But if I've got guys that need those things, we'll take care of that on the track or turf and do some of those, you know, like I said, the, the 110s or the 200 meters. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's a, for us, I want to say it's a rule, you know, to quote kind of, you know, Dan John kind of thing. It's simple, but it's not easy. I think we do run a pretty simple program, but we don't make it easy. I think our guys have understood, you know, our philosophy in the weight room is we have to maintain a culture just like anybody else. We have to maintain a standard. It's the Xavier way, so to speak. And our guys, uh, as they're training, they've got to do a multitude of things. You know, the guy lifting the weight has to lift the weight. It's, it's the high-intensity philosophy you and I learned right. um, with, with Coach Asanovich at Tampa. It's the guy's job to lift the weight is to lift weights. The partner's job is to make sure the weights are right, make sure the card is right, make sure that he's motivated and spotted, taken care of, encouraged, whatever it may be. Be a good teammate. Right. And uh, we try to really emphasize that philosophy for our guys is to be good teammates. You know, really socialize with each other in the weight room and push each other. You know, be that teammate that you can rely on and trust on and have that safety net of guys around you. So if you're having a bad day, if you slip and fall, you got some guys that can pick you up and take care of you. So, you know, that's our philosophy. That's what we do. And our, our, our summer is, like you said, it's a hibernation time. You know, it's our guys – Got to hibernate like bears. We've got to eat. We've got to grow. Uh, when we start moving, you know, in the, in the season, we start running and moving. Our guys will drop weight. Um, it's just sort of a natural cycle for our guys. So I've got some guys that really need to pack on some weight, really need to sleep right, eat right, drink right, and, and really lift a lot of heavy weights and, 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 and move a little bit. And so it's, I say, simple, uh, maybe not easy like Coach John says. So if you if you dial it down into, like, a specific day, you yeah. know, um, you know, I mean, you mentioned high intensity. I know, you know, you mentioned Dan John. You mentioned, you know, Pat O'Shea. 
different philosophies there, you know. All over the place. Yeah, you know, what, you know, you know, obviously, just, you know, you don't have to give me the whole week, but kind of an athlete comes in the weight room and they do what, then they do what? You know, do they go to the warm-up? Do, do you take them out on the court? Do you? You know, typically we, uh, we always start, you know, I want to check our guys' body weights. That's one thing we're curious about, you know, to make sure our guys are, and that's the, the, the one way, you know, questionnaire-wise on their workout card, you know, how many hours did you sleep last night, how are you eating, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, 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 you know, how much hydration do you have? We'll ask those questions and fill those things out and keep track of that. I'll monitor that with their body weight. You know, we'll do body comps, obviously, you know, once a month, once every two months or so. Um, you know, basically we'll roll right to a warm-up. You know, we'll foam roll. Uh, we'll do, you know, some team you know, weighted ab work. Uh, you know, you and I both come from the old school where, you know, it's not core work. You know, when I, when I think of core lifts, I think of bench squat clean, right? So, you know, I still call it weighted abs. And that's what we do. And it, but, you know, once again, it's, you know, it's bar stir, bar twist. It's anything, you know, with hanging hip flexion. Uh, we're doing sandbag sit-ups. You know, it's uh, it's right. you know, typical kind of weighted abs type thing. So we'll do foam roll, we'll do team abs, uh, you know, weighted abs. We roll right into the workout. And once again, I'm, I'm going to run total body on a Monday, and it's going to be upper body push-pull, lower body push-pull. I want to keep a pace moving, intensity. Uh, I want, you know, the, the, to be a little bit of a hum in the weight room and a little bit of a, you know, a feel to it. You can feel when it's working. You know how it is. You have that coaching kind of art and science behind it. You feel when the room's right and guys are really pumped up and guys are working hard. And sometimes you just have to step back and let it roll. And uh, sometimes you have to step in and and take control of the workout. But, you know, that's why we try to lean on our seniors. And we have a philosophy that Xavier's always led by seniors. And we really push those guys and give those guys leadership roles to help do this. And basically I'll take our computer, plug it into our TV and run a PowerPoint. Uh, that's how I'll run the workout. We still have workout cards that I'll update. I do a lot of the administrative work and let the guys just sort of take care of the workout. Yeah. So a lot of times I'm walking around with a clipboard and a pencil, you know, checking weights, writing down weights, make sure guys record some weights, report to me, et cetera. I want those guys to be a little more free and to be able to do that and not be hindered by a workout card or a pencil. And like I said, I've got small enough groups right now in the summer uh, I've got seven guys right now. We've let a few guys go home first session. They're going to be all back in Ju- and July 6th. So we'll have a full roster of 13 guys in July. But right now it's a little more manageable with smaller groups. Yeah. But to answer your question, yeah, foam roll, you know, warm-up. A lot of times what I like to do, coaches, we'll, we'll just call it a working warm-up. But for me it's, you know, we're going to do a push-up, pull-up, dip ladder. You know, we're going to go one through five, five through one. Uh, it may be something, you know, kettlebell swing, kettlebell goblet squat. Um, sworn X glute ham, ham roller and do the same thing like a little two, four, six, eight little ladder and that's a working warm up getting some body weight movements because I still love to do body weight movements with our guys Sure. Uh, and then we'll start working into the, the heavier workload and we want to be a very good bench pressing team I'm not going to shy away from it we're going to be a really good bench pressing team a really good leg pressing team uh, and those are our two big staples for upper body lower body pushes um, you know, it's once again, you know, I'm a big Coach John fan. I can't, you know, recommend people enough about going to take a look at his site, reading his materials. For me, like I've read enough stuff, and you and I both say, you know, say the same way. Let's read a book about, you know, parenthood. Let's read a book about, you know, socialization or psychology, whatever you want right. to call it. The coaching books that make sense to me later in my life here, you know, in the seven years or so that I've gotten to know Coach John has been his his writing. It's it's common sense. It makes sense. It, it, it's easy to read. Puts a little, you know, laugh into it, which is great. But uh, you know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be good at doing those exercises, that bench press and that leg press. But like Coach John said, like I was gonna get to the point was, you know, when you walk in the weight room, you train what you see in the mirror, and that's the mistake is that don't train the front side of the body, train the back side of the body. Right. So I'm always make sure I put a two to one, you know, you know, pull push in there. We're gonna train posterior chain. That's why we love doing, you know, pull ups. RDLs, and I'll still mix in, even though we're talking about high intensity. And we don't do Olympic style lifting. Uh, gosh, with you, coach, we don't put a bar on our back and we don't squat. You know, I'll, I'll gobble squat, we'll trap bar pull. I've got an old school, you know, uh, bear squat. Um, yeah. I've got a pitch shark. You know, we've got two leg presses. We'll do those type, you know, uh, you know, hip hinge or, or you know, or hip movements, um, lower body push movements. But we won't put a bar on our back and squat our guys. And that's that's something that uh, that I've learned over time with our guys with their lever links. It's a fight sometimes that you want to make sure they get that flexibility and do it the right way, and that's where I think I can get it out of the kettlebell, you know, the bear squat, the pitch shark, et cetera, without having to put the load on their on their, their actual load on their T-spine, so to speak. Sure. And, you know, but uh, like I said, train the backside of the body. We'll still RDL with a power high pull, power shrug. We'll trap bar pull with a power shrug. Uh, we'll still get a little bit of that Olympic-type, you know, the, the triple extension, what you want to call, hips, knees, and ankles, shoulders in a straight line. 
you know, we did trap bar pull today, and we're trying to get our guys to power shrug every time. So we're still getting a little bit of that element, right. even though we are an intensity program. Um, so you may say that I'm all over the place, and, I, and I'm really – you know, don't pigeonhole myself, but, you know, if we did want to call it, we're going to call it a high-intensity program. That's what it is. Right. Um, like I said, we're, uh, we're going to do posterior chain, and it's it's important. You know, glute activation, we always get our guys to understand how important it is to fire their glutes um, with everything we do. When we stand up, you know, the rule in the weight room, every time you stand up, you're going to squeeze your cheeks. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, you know, that's the best way I can get our guys to understand what glute activation is. That's good. Um, anytime we RDL, anytime we do a hyper glute ham, Anytime we do, a, you know, like I say, Sornex glute ham roller has been really good to us the last year or so. We've had those, been really nice. And we're going to really squeeze our glutes to get that glute activation through that. Right. But uh, say, coach, it's it's ankle stability program. It's something we'll run through, and that's you know calf raise, tibia flexion. Uh, we've got a little piece called the Bob, which is basically yep. like a tibia flexion, you know, uh, dorsal flexion, plantar flexion, all built into one. But it's a, it's a push pull philosophy from the start. Warm up, team abs, upper body, lower body push pull. We always get a tough finisher, just like anybody else. Uh, today we've got a, we do have a hallway space we use. I've got a couple sleds that we'll push down the hall. Uh, you know, high push on the way down, low push on the way back. Tough finishers. Right. Uh, do you know strongman type things? So I've got battle ropes. I have kegs. I've got tires. I've got war hammers. Any kind of tough finisher I can think of, we'll throw it in there, and that's how we like to finish the workout as well. And then we always finish the workout again with a team stretch, cool down session. Uh, do some different stretches around the room with the TRX straps. You know, hanging from the racks to get our upper body stretch using our sticks. Um, you know, couch stretch on the, on the Sornex split squat stands. We'll do a couch stretch, you know, get our hip flexors loose. And that's the biggest thing for our guys is our, our hip flexors are connected to our knees. And our guys have knee problems because their hips are so tight. So right. we're going to work on stretching those hip flexors out a lot. Um, you know, table stretch. We've got some boxes. We'll get a, you know, table stretch, uh, you know, IT bands and, and, and piriformer, so to speak. And we'll take care of all that flexibility at the end. And we always want to always hit on the educational standpoint at the end as well. We always want to bring our guys up, talk about, you know, how much are you resting, how much are you drinking, how much are you eating, you know, the little things. Everybody always says, we're going to spend a couple hours a day with you. Uh, even though our workouts really go about 45 minutes to an hour. It's, right. it's a pretty quick pace, pretty high intensity type of atmosphere. But what are you doing the other 23 hours a day, 22 hours a day to take care of your body to make sure you're ready for that next bout of exercise when you come in? There's always some sort of educational standpoint there. And also, I think it's important to let our guys know about each other. You know, right. we'll give a quick boost of, hey, tell me about what's going on today real quick. Who's got a test? Who's got something on their mind? Let's talk about it. Get our guys to open up to each other a little bit. Make sure that you're, you're coaching the athlete, but you're also coaching the person. It's important that they know that you're there for them. I think they really understand that. You know, we really bend over backwards, go out of our way, make sure our guys know that we have their backs and all we want to expect of them is just hard work. I tell it to our recruits when they come and I tell it to our guys, all you have to do is walk in that door, roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty and work hard, meet me halfway and then the sky's the limit for where we can go from there. Try it. And like I said, we want to know about them though. Uh, tell me what's going on in class, who's got a test, we'll be thinking about you, who's got any kind of family issues, we'll be thinking about you. Let's get to know each other a little better other than, you know, talking on the phones and you know, FaceTime and our Snapchat with each other, et cetera. Let's, let's get to know each other in person, and that's important for us, too. Yeah, well, I think, you know, everybody that's a fan of the show, that's been listening to the show, you've heard a lot of common commonalities there. You yeah. know, I mean, you know, uh, you know, if you've heard me speak, you've heard me say that, you know, I'm a principle-based strength coach, not a philosophy-based strength coach. Right. You know, I'm being able to, to utilize a lot of different tools and, and, and modalities and exercises from different from different philosophies, and uh, you know, and then obviously caring about the athlete. I mean, that's what we're all about. And that's I think that's you know, I think we were very fortunate to have a great mentor together and, and Mark Sanovich and and been able to to kind of you know grow together throughout our, our career. Sure. I think um, you know we we kind of we kind of end the shows with some some resources here, and so I wanted to you know this is you know, this is good because I kind of know this for you, but give me the you know the best piece of coaching advice you've ever received. You know, you asked some of the, you know, when you I talked about this on uh, on text messaging back and forth, I've really been thinking about this for a few days now. And it's, it's hard to really pinpoint. It really is. But I think, you know, I think the goal of your program here, you know, Iron Game Chalk Talk, is really reach out to the younger folks in the profession. So I think I really try to narrow this down for them as well and not really play to myself or play to you, but, you know, let's, let's really reach out and talk to these young professionals. Sure. I think the biggest thing is, is, is be professional. Yep. You know, professional appearance, professional in nature. You know, dealing with the administration, dealing with the coaches. I always tell my staff is that yes, we work in a you know, we work in the weight room. You know, where 
you know, shorts and t-shirts and, and athletic shoes, et cetera, but always have a change of clothes so that when you go upstairs and meet an administrator, you know, it's a pair of slacks and hard shoes and a belt and a nice polo or a nice dress shirt or whatnot. You know, be professional. It's, uh, you know, you don't want to pigeonhole and, 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 you know, meatheads and this, that, and the other, but you want to be professional about what you're doing. So I think, you know, be professional. You know, write thank you notes. You know, call people on the phone. Don't just try to make everything so impersonal with email or text message and really try to connect with people and be professional in that matter. Right. Uh, when you show up to a conference or a clinic, be professional. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned is that, you know, also, you know, be yourself. You know, a lot of times people want you to be who you're not. And, I, and I'm guilty of that here at Xavier. Sometimes, you know, our coaches and administrators really want, and, I, and you and I both know this, they're well-intended, just not well-educated sometimes. Right. You have to be an educator. You have to be a teacher. You have to be a coach. There's a lot of hats you have to wear. But just try to be yourself. Don't be somebody that you're not because eventually you'll, you'll be you'll be seen as a fraud. You know, a lot of times these young student athletes are, can kind of see through and filter that a little Absolutely. bit. You know, just, just be yourself. Be professional. That's probably the best thing to really reach out to these young folks and talk about. No, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. What about a a, um, a favorite quote that you have? Maybe you posted in your in your weight room or one that you kind of live by? You know what? I think if you ask our guys, I've always got some sort of little pearl of wisdom to throw out there. And <laughs> they, they throw it back at me. They, they like the ones that you know, you, we've all heard them. It's, uh, you know, if the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending. Or, uh, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, uh, what else can we do? You know, the guys that need to gain weight, we'll talk about this. I'll say, hey, get your weight up, not your hate up. You know, those type of things. And, <laughs> you know, when our guys don't want to clean up the weight room, I'll remind them that their mom doesn't work here. You know, they're gonna, she's not coming behind you to clean up after you. Um, I like it when we train legs. So, once again, we talk about this with basketball. And a lot of times, you know, unfortunately, I hear this sometimes, is basketball coaches don't want to train legs in season, which I can't wrap my head around. Right. You know, it's, you know, it's a skill. It's a uh, I always tell them, like, you wouldn't want to not touch a basketball in the off season, would you? So it's a year-round process. So it's, uh, you know, if the wolf wants to eat, the wolf's got to run, right? Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, the legs feed the wolf, and that's where it's, that's where it's at. We have to train legs. So, I, yeah, we talk about that a little bit. Um, I think the biggest thing I probably use, you know, I think the biggest thing I, I resonate back to my dad, who always told me, you know, hard work never killed anybody. You know, you've got to roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty, and you got to work hard. We talk about that a little bit. I think the, the thing that I've really kind of leaned on, you know, in the latter part of my career a little bit, as we talk about this at Xavier, trying to build this culture the last five or six years, trying to keep that standard in the weight room that's been here, you know, for decades. We've had some really good strength coaches come through here, some really good basketball programs. Is that, you know, I, start, I always remind our guys, hey, you know why we do it this way? And they say, you know, because that's the way it's supposed to be done. It's the right way. And we talk about doing it the right way. And sometimes, you know, a lot of times you hear me talk about, you know, you know why we do it that way? Because it's the right way. And that's that's it. That's the right way to do, you know, a pull-up. That's the right way to do a bench press. And it's it's the right way. And we talk about doing it the right way. That's just a simple way to kind of kind of put it in a nutshell. It really is. Oh, I like that. There's a lot of them out there, really. Like I said, we're all full of quotes. But, you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's a workman's world. It really is. you got to have... Uh, you gotta have, you know, work hands, hands that are shoveling ditches, not hands that are counting money. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's, uh, you gotta have some calluses on your hands. You gotta work. <laughs> what about a? Uh, all right, so you mentioned it earlier with the, the yep. young strength coaches, you know, and and you know, a, a question that I've added here to these resources is one that a uh, question that you ask in the interview process that's maybe different than the typical strengths and weaknesses question. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think for us here, I've, I've been through a. Unfortunately, uh, uh, I've been through a lot of interview process here at Xavier. I think Xavier's a, a tough place sometimes to keep uh, good coaches. It's a stepping stone type school where we understand that that we're really trying to work on our salary base, trying to get that improved. I want to make sure we're keeping consistently with our coaches so that our sport coaches have that consistency with our training. Um, but we have been through um, quite a few strength coaches here uh, in my tenure. Maybe that's a reflection on me. Like I said, once again, maybe I'm not a very good administrator. That's maybe I'm a pretty good coach, but maybe I'm a terrible head strength coach. I don't that's know. So, um, I, I take a good hard look at that. I really do. I want to make sure that I'm a, uh, as good of an administrator as <coughs> a coach. And you and I both know, you know, unfortunately, we got to spend a lot of time doing administrative work. And a lot right. of time that takes us off the floor and – Actually, being a head strength coach sometimes means you're you're probably spending 20, 30 percent of your time maybe just training athletes. The rest of the time, maybe administrative work. Right. Um, but I always, you know, at Xavier, it's a different school because once again, we're a private school. We're a Jesuit Catholic 
public school, which doesn't mean you have to be a Jesuit or a Catholic to work here, but there's a, there's a, a mission at Xavier that's called Magis, and it's called Doing More. Um, and we always try to you know, fit it into that and make sure that we, I, I typically ask people, you know, typical interview questions, but the big thing that hits home with me is that, once again, like I said before, is that you know, we have a very small office, and I want to make sure I'm feeling comfortable with those folks in my office. It's, it's 90 square feet. It's the smallest office you've ever been in. There's three of us that are in there. I've been in it. Yeah, you've been there. Um, so I always ask, why you? And that's, the, that's the, just the simplest two-word question, like, why you? Like, why is this fit for you the best fit for us and vice versa? Um, how do you fit into that Xavier way or fit into that Xavier philosophy of Magis? And that's more of a university broad type question, but I think it really answers the question that I need to know is I want people to be really passionate about what they're doing. And I right. want them to, to really, you know, sell me on the fact that they really want to be here at Xavier. They really want to work with our sport teams and coaches and administrators. They want to be here you know, for a good minimum of four years so they can see a freshman through senior class go to work. Um, you know, these one- and two-year type folks that want to, you know, take that next step and whatnot, I'm not really that interested in. Right. I want someone that has a little bit of longevity, but once again, I want to be a guy that also, if you work hard for me, I'm going to work hard for you, and I'm going to bend over backwards and really try to help you. But you and I both know we both have really well connections in the field, and we can really take people to that next level and do things for them and do things with them. But I always ask, you know, why are you? Why are you the fit for us, or why are we the fit for you? You know, you got to go both ways with it. Sure. That's probably the biggest thing I really lean on and ask. Uh, is the best question I think I can have for folks. Absolutely. What about a, um, a give us a give us a book? Yeah. Uh, inside strength and conditioning and outside strength and conditioning that you'd recommend. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say it again. I'm, I'm just I'm just a, a Dan John pimp, I guess. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's got a new one coming out, right? I'm sorry? So he's got a new one coming out, right? Yeah, he's got a new one coming out. But if you go to his website, a lot of things are there are free. You know, it's the PDFs. And, you know, you go to teennation.com and you can read. I know Teen Nation has some things you want to filter out. with, But he has a lot of his articles listed in there. I just really enjoy reading a lot of what he puts out there. I really do. Yeah. Um, you know, his books, his articles, so his intervention DVDs. You know, for me, it clicks. The light bulb went off and I understood that. You know, and I, like I say, seven years ago, I think 2007, when I first met him and talked to him, like it just went off. I understood, like, I'm really not good at what I do. Like, you're really good. I need to start looking at what you're doing and, and thinking about your philosophy and thinking about what you say and write and speak. And he just seems like he's just a really down-to-earth, honest guy that really writes no nonsense and makes it a little bit enjoyable to read because he's got a sense of humor. And right. like for me, it just clicked. The light bulb went off. I really enjoy reading coach John's material. I really do. It's good. Uh, you know, hear him in person, meeting him, et cetera. I mean, it's, it's something I think everybody should take a look at. So that's, that's more the professional from the non-professional or personal. You know, like I said, you and I both talked about this over the years is that, you know, what can we do to be a better parent? You know, what can we do uh, to be a better husband? You know, whatever it may be. Um, I've really enjoyed reading, you know, recently, I've got a book uh, uh, called Ashley's War. Uh, it's a book about uh, the cultural support teams uh, that female uh, military officers or enlisted uh, folks went through to join with the Special Operations Forces uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, so it's a, I've enjoyed reading books uh, that come from that genre. I think I'm a, a pretty proud to be an American. I think I'm a patriot. I think I really have a warm and heartfelt you know, gratitude for those men and women that serve our country and sure. and I support those books because I want some of that, that support to go back to them and sure. I know some of that, you know, the books that you purchase will, will take care of that too but I've enjoyed reading books that, that a lot of these soldiers are writing coming back you know, whether that be and, and granted a lot of them are special forces that's you know Navy SEALs and uh, you know SF guys that are writing books and doing some things but this, the most current book I'm reading is called Ashley's War that's the I've just really kind of gotten into the first little bit of about a third of it. It's, it deals with females and cultural support teams and, and women that travel with special operations forces to to really you know win the hearts and minds of the, the females in Afghanistan and their their culture uh, with regards to you know females being accessible to females. You know, male soldiers are not accessible to female civilians in Afghanistan. Right. And a lot of the intelligence and a lot of the, the information they can get from those females can only be brought so by other females. Right. A pretty interesting topic for me, and I, I've, I've enjoyed reading it so far. So, I've, you know, we've, we've done books as a staff here at Xavier. Uh, Energy Bus was the last one we read as a staff. Yeah, it's a John Gordon book, yeah. Um, yep, I mean, so it's we're, we're always trying to, you know, as a staff, doing some things like that. Uh, our head coach will give us a book and, you know, challenge us to read it and bring some ideas to the table. So we've done that recently. 
Um, so those are, you know, once again, try to sure. run the gamut of, you know, personal, professional, uh, take care of a few things like that. Absolutely. Well, we both we both have daughters, you know, and so that's a that's a great that's book great. in terms of just trying to you know to set the bar high for our daughters, and that there is yes. absolutely no nothing that they can or can't do. Um, that's great. Right. But what about a give us an app? Is there any apps that you use for your own productivity or with your athletes? You know, I've really recommended you know, and we've had this relationship with, with Cliff Marshall and Ben Kramer Ignition. You know, the Ignition APG app with their Challenger band yeah. is something that we've put out there to a lot of our athletes. Uh, we have access to Ignition, you know, as, as, a, as an outside, you know, contractual console. Um, you know, a team that comes down here to help work with us a little bit. Uh, we replicate our NBA combine twice a year here. We do in the preseason and postseason. We want our guys to be familiar with every test that the NBA combine goes through. That's not very... Unfamiliar. A lot of schools are doing that as well. Right. Um, but for the, you know, if, if I don't have the tools, um, you know, laser timing or any of the things that I need from a setup, you know, those guys have that. We use those guys to lean on. Um, so, you know, the ignition guys have been really good to us. We have access to, to those guys. And, and in return, we want to give those guys a little bit of business. And, you know, if they're challenger bands or something that our teams can use, uh, you know, for the summer. Say, for example, I have a, uh, a basketball guy that's going to go to Australia for a couple weeks. Um, and he needs something to do while he's gone. So I've tried to put together like a little bit of a care package for him that you know has a few things there with a jump rope and a stretch band and a challenger band, and you know try to reach out, try to find some access to a gym for him if he can train. It's a little bit harder overseas, but we're working on that. But yeah. that's an easy app. You know, go to the Ignition APG app, look at the challenger band, and they take you through you know a gamut of, uh, of exercises with their challenger bands. I think that's been something that's been good for us and Absolutely. could be good for uh, you know for a lot of people. You know, once again, I. It was not lifting weights. I love to lift, and I love to lift our guys. But if there's a way we can do it with a band, then uh, sure. I'm, all for, I'm all for it. What about a website you recommend? Shoot, I don't even I don't even get on the computer that often. I think <laughs> uh, I think it's one of those things that uh, if I get home and I can read a little bit, and I can. Uh, uh, I think the biggest website I use is Google as a search engine. Yeah. Just, uh, I, I think my biggest thing, you know, curiosity has always been a good teacher for me. I've always had a very curious mind, so if I don't have an answer or something or I need a question, you know, I just Google everything, to yeah. be honest with you. And it may not be the best way to find information, but at least it'll lead me to another question that I can get answered, another question I can get answered. So I've always had a very curious mind. I think that's been like the best educator for me. <laughs> but, you know, website, you know, once again, I'll, I'll check a few here and there. Um, you know, we, we do, you know, curiosity with NBA you know, draft, et cetera, try to figure out what some guys' numbers are putting up with the combines, and right. you'll take a look at some professional things like that and try to help our guys. Uh, a lot of it right now is really just kind of equipment. You know, we're, we're working on uh, trying to you know, design a new facility in the next few years. I've been taking a look at a lot of equipment designs and a lot of other weight rooms and getting some ideas and trying to go to equipment web pages. And that's been, that's been my focus really on the computer nowadays. I'm still, hey, you know, a good coach always has a pencil, right? That's not a good <laughs> quote for you, so... I'm still a little antiquated with pencil and paper, and you know my PowerPoint presentations are uh, legal pads, so to speak. So, you know, I still uh, I still try to do things by hand the old way. But uh, if I need to look something up, you know, Google's my go-to. Absolutely. Well, buddy, it's it, it this has been fun, man. It's been a treat to have you on the show, and yeah. and uh, right. you know, I it was a last minute it was a last minute thing for me to go sure. out to the CSCCA. Uh, that year and get my jacket because I was you know I was with Cincinnati I didn't think I could go it was one of those deals and so I get out there and I, I go across the stage you know before you get inducted and they just read my bio and I didn't know I have any clue that anybody wrote anything sent anything in or anything like that and uh, and so like five guys later you get you get in and uh, and and you recognize me in your freaking speech man and it was it meant a lot to me. Um, because you've had the same, you know, same impact on me in my in my career, and and uh, so this is me publicly saying, Matt Jennings uh, is is one of my guys, man, and and uh, I wouldn't be half the strength coach I was without you having been a part of my life, man. So I appreciate that. I appreciate being on the show, yeah. what you're doing for the profession, and and uh, I appreciate you coming on the show, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Like I said, it's been an honor. It's always good to catch up with you. I know uh, you and I and Angie got to speak a little bit the other day, and it's always good to catch up with old friends. And you know, it's always good to keep a little competitive uh, nature in you too, because I know you're out there doing big things. And I'm just trying to keep up with you a little bit. So Bless you. you've always been a good friend. You've always been. Uh, you got to tell some stories. These guys about changing your alternators in Tampa. Though. We need to. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie McKee for you. 
uh, uh, garage manual going here about <laughs> alternator, alternator change-outs in Tampa. I'll try to, I'll try to work between, that into the between, intro. Between you and I and all the car problems we had in Tampa, between <laughs> your car, my wife's car, my flat tires, working that construction site over by one button place. Um, yep. We've had some good times, it has. It's been Absolutely. a good journey, and we've, uh, we've been together for a long time. Like I said, I'm honored and appreciative of you having me on the show. I really appreciate you and all you're doing for the profession, and a lot of respect for you as well. I appreciate you having me. It's been good, good to talk to you guys. Thanks a lot, buddy. Have a great week, man. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Enjoy it, everybody. Thanks so much. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree, on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Ron dot McKeefree. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk.